Hi everyone, welcome to this short tutorial and today we're looking at just making things a bit neater and a bit looking more professional and that is through the use of headers and footers. So you can see in this um, piece that I recently sent off it has a header. There are so many times that I've been digging through music that my students have left or that I've left somewhere and it's just a pile of music. Um, and having these headers really helps just to have the title and the, the instrument or the part name on the top there. It can look more professional to have your copyright information down here at the bottom. And so um, let's have a look at how to do that. So here's an arrangement that I've made and it does not have any copyright at the bottom. And we also don't have that on the second page where we want to have that header as well. Because at the moment it's just page two and it's in treble clef. And if this page gets lost, I could have no idea what it belongs to and it would take quite a lot of working out. So it definitely helps to have that header there. And it's fairly easy. We can go to Format and Style. And just to show you, we can also go to, if we have nothing selected, we go to the Properties tab, we can also go to Style Settings there, and it brings up the same dialog. Normally it starts here at the top with Score, but if we just go down to Header and Footer, then we can see that we've got a header section and a footer section and we can obviously remove or add them as we need to and this is the default that it comes with sorry we keep getting these pop-ups so we have a page number on the right and a page number on the left of the odd and even pages respectfully and we have a copyright uh, information at the bottom there so let's start with some of the basic ones and, and this dollar p is a metadata tag or a special symbol you can see there it is uh, i have to hold over it uh, $p is page number on the f except on the first page with a capital P it's on all pages. It makes sense that we wouldn't need it on the first page. The first page is obviously the first page. It's got a title and all that kind of thing. But it may be that you need to need to be adding it on the first page as well. What we want to have is the work name and that's in work title. And so we're going to use that tag. Let me just freeze this quickly freeze it there and you can see that it's a movement title down there followed by the part name which is dollar i okay so to get that special metadata tag i'll use dollar colon and then the special tag which is work title and then colon again and then we'll use a space dash space and then let's put in our dollar i which is the instrument or the part name right then we'll copy that paste it into the even pages and there we go we get colors of the wind soprano that's all I need uh, I already know that this is the second page so that's that's exactly what I want and then we need the copyright it may also be that as I was creating this I just called it arrangement one or something as a file name uh, or when I was when I started and I put in the the title or perhaps I didn't even put it in the title and so we need to go and edit those things just remember that I can change this text at any time just by double clicking uh, and, and add whatever I want here. It will not change the the metadata tags that we have as part of the file. And so we would that's what this is referring to. It refers to that. You know, I can change this, I can call it colors of the window, and get no change there. So we we know that if I, if I perhaps change this, it will not change that. So we do that by going to file project properties and here we have our work title right so there if I change it to window it now thinks for a while has a moment where it collapses no there we go now it's colors of the window okay obviously that's not what we want let's change it back composer if we want to uh, and then in the copyright information here this is what will appear at the bottom and it's already set to do that by default uh, we just want to put in our copyright information. Normally you would do this at the beginning of your project. Uh, you make sure you find the right copyright information. So this one is copyright uh, 2015 Walt Disney Records. But now we want that special copyright symbol, right? It looks not great if you just do that. So let's get the copyright symbol. And there are a couple of ways to do this. I will put on a screenshot over here. Some people in the MuseScore forum provided this information very useful so whatever whatever platform you're on you can add your symbol so I'm on Windows so I'll do alt and 0169 alt 0169 and there we go there's our copyright symbol obviously you're probably not going to have this video open every time you're doing you know making a new score 
Uh, my recommendation is just to open a Microsoft Word document and just type in bracket C bracket and it changes it to the copyright symbol and you can copy it from there. Control C, come back to this folder, uh, this file. Control V, hello. There we go. Right, we've got it there ready to copy. So that is useful. And now if I click OK, it updates again. And now I have my information down at the bottom that I wanted. So that's the headers and footers. Now you may also think that this, uh, in effect, the default of this is quite small. And we can find that We're going back again to style, format style or style settings over there. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we get text styles. And here we can choose header, style and footer style. And you can see at the moment the footer is size 9. Let's increase that also up to 11 and just get a nicer... Right, there we go. And the header is currently 11 and that's fine. But I know that this one also starts at 9 and, and for me that's a bit small. It should, it needs to be at 11. Now you're probably also thinking, well I don't want to go and do this all of this rigmarole for every single project. And you'd be right. So there are a couple of ways we can make this easier for ourselves in the future. If you are going to be doing a similar thing and you know that you want it to be that size and you know that you want that header to be there, because it's a style, we can actually save that style. So you can see I've saved mine as a part style and then I've got a different one for the full score. Uh, just depending on what, you know, at the moment I'm on a part, but if I want to be on the full score and I want slightly different sizes, absolutely, that's fine. Uh, we can save them there. And that means that any time, for instance, over here, I can go to Format, Load Style, and let's load my full score style. And it has done exactly that. Um, based on another style that I had previously, which included page settings and all kinds of other things. But there it's got my header and my footer as well. So really, really useful stuff to immediately bring back. The other great thing about this, of course, is that you can actually save it as the default that gets used automatically whenever you open a new project. And you can do that by going to Edit, Preferences, and then Score, and where it says Style, you would choose your full score style that you want and style for part, you can see I've chosen my part style. And so that means that every time I open a new part, I will automatically have, so let's open for instance the alto part. And it automatically comes up with those headers and footers as I had in the previous document. So that can be really useful and make sure that when I'm opening new scores, this is the default that it has, unless there's some other template that overwrites those. All right, that's our little deep dive into headers and footers for today. Hope it's been helpful, and see you in the next quick tip. Bye for now.